Yes, it's also an honor for me to speak uh, to, to, to speak here because the issue uh, the issue is very very important and indeed I'm uh, very engaged in the Middle East uh, policies as member of the Committee for Foreign Affairs, especially when it comes to Israel, the Jewish life, and um, but everything depends on every everything. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to speak um, to you today about a crisis that is, has been going on for years, one that seems far away to many, especially in Germany, also in the politics, but affects us all. Today, for the first time in years, the guns in Yemen have finally fallen silent. The only two months old ceasefire offers a desperately needed relief for the population of a country that has been suffering since unbelievable seven years. For far too long, Yemen has been the sense of curious human misery. But the road to lasting peace is still long. Only time will tell whether um, the calm will last or even lead to a sustainable peace process. Ladies and gentlemen, the current ceasefire must not blind us to the fact that the humanitarian situation in Yemen remains dire. Unbelievable, 21 out of 30 million people are still dependent on humanitarian aid. At the same time, the sorrow and um, anarchy of the conflict have opened gaps for terrorist organizations like Al-Qaeda or the Islamic State to creep and establish foothold. These terror organizations have managed to exploit the suffering of the civilian population to grow in numbers and expand their reach. Unfortunately, regardless of this ceasefire, they still remain the threat to Yemen's stability as well as the global security. Friction among regional actors, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates, is also likely to prolong the war and especially the brutal regime of the Houthi movement and the country's north remains a cause of concern. God is great, death to America, death to Israel, cursed be the Jews, victory to Islam. This is the slogan with which the pro-Iranian Houthis present themselves. When the civil war in Yemen began, the Houthis fought for control of the country. However, when Iran and its Hezbollah allies began backing the Houthis, it transformed the entire civil war. The, the Yemeni civil war was turned into an in international proxy war for control over the country and for the Germany over the entire Arab Peninsula. All sides of the conflict are reported to have violated human rights and international humanitarian law. Yet, the Ruti's use of the indiscriminate violence has contributed to the humanitarian situation in Yemen being the, wor the worst in the world, as the UN puts it. The Ruti's have established an efficient police state in the area under their control that does not tolerate dissent. Freedom of the press, freedom of speech, and freedom of assembly are not guaranteed, even they not exist. And for me, as a member of a parliament coming up from a liberal party, staying for a free world, for free election, for free press, it is unbelievable how, uh, how crazy these times are. Not only in Yemen, of course, this is very, very, very crazy, but also in other authoritarian um, countries in this world, Iran, China, Russia. And I think we have to be very, very close together. All people, um, they want to fight for a free world. They want to fight for a, ro for a, li for a living in freedom. I have three daughters. And I do not want that they sometimes they want to wake up in a world um, 
some dictatorship will draw down the light or say, okay, you, you cannot live in this, you cannot live in this way. I, I want that they grow up in the world. They can decide by their own what they what, what they want to learn, uh, who they marry, it, they marry, whether they marry maybe women or men. It doesn't matter. It's their own decision and not a decision of a government or of a society how to how you want to live. And I think this is the most important thing. You are sitting together, um, fighting for a free, uh, for a free liberal world. Ladies and gentlemen, we must not forget that Iran still provides assistance for the Houthis, the facto rule. It is important, not only in Yemen, also the Hezbollah when it comes to Israel. Iran, Iran, destroyed. Everything sounds like liberal, lib liberal world. Iran and Houthis not only share geopolitical interests but ideological closeness. This, they speak of resistance against the United, United States and Israel and practice an anti Zionist and anti Semitic ideology. As a result, most of the Jews still remaining in Yemen have now fled the country. Not only in view of our commitment to Israel security have I believed that the Houthis should have been officially classified in Germany as terrorist group long ago. Of course, this would mean to coordinate it with the UN and the National Humanitarian Organization to, to ensure that essential relief efforts will not be constrained by this decision. Today, the international coalition needs to hold the Houthis accountable for their continued military aggression in Yemen and against Saudi Rahman and the UAE. And when I listen to a German television or to a German radio station, I hear a lot of uh, accountability from to how can we bring um, the military from Russia uh, to, to court. But I think we have also m more here about how we bring the Houthis to the, to, to the court. Then we, we only focused on main issues. And if another main issue come, then other issues are a little bit out of the focus. But they are still there. And so the most important thing is to, to say we cannot accept this. And we have to, we have to make them accountable not only the Russian military guys, we have also um, fight um, that uh, the Houthis uh, sometimes uh, accountable for their for their for, for their aggression against uh, free people. To prevent an, an Iranian-dominated Arab uh, peninsula and a safe haven for terrorists that threatened us all, and then a national coalition was formed at the behest of the. The Yemeni government, more than 10 countries led by Saudi Arabia, stepped in. The military campaign finally led to the sign of the Riyadh Agreement in 2019. And under this agreement, all parties of the conflict agreed to share power in the post-war Yemen, ultimately paving the way for the ceasefire we see today. Still, even with the ceasefire in place, the need for coordination and humanitarian assistance and development cooperation is urgent. It is essential to provide the people of Yemen with still much needed humanitarian resources. These people have been suffering for years and desperately need prospects for a better future. And I think nobody, I think nobody in Germany can imagine, can not imagine a little bit what it means to the people. We live in unbelievable, everybody, all the, also the people, they say in Germany they have nothing. They have a million times more than the people in Yemen suffering for the, for the, last, for the last decade. As hunger and um, diseases continue in Yemen and the political agreement remains fragile at best, this also places a responsibility on Germany. And this is what we talk about. For years, Germany, in conjunction uh, with our international partners, the US, France, UK, have supported the Saudi-led coalition. 
But even before the, that Germany has been actively supporting the people of Yemen for more than 15 years. While it may not be evident immediately, Germany and Yemen have much in common historical. They too experienced a divided country which was reunified in 1990. And I grew up, no, I grew not up, I, <laughs> but I'm getting older, um, in, a, in a world that was not free. I know what it means to start at home, and my parents said after one hour drive by a car, <laughs> it was, this was the world. There is no free world. And it changed. And my parents could not decide what they want to study. Other people decided about their life, what to study, whether you study or not. And now I grew up in a world I could do everything, and my, my three daughters too. But uh, I know the time um, it, was, it, was, it was different. And um, our um, uh, steady support for the provision of humanitarian assistance in Yemen has grown significantly over the years. We focus on providing emergency food aid, health care, access to water, sanitation, and heat chain, and civilian protection. At the moment, Germany is the third largest, the third largest humanitarian donor to Yemen. This is something that we have to keep up, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, let me be very clear. Of course, instability in the region also has direct implication for Germany. Because of, German, of Yemen's loca location at the southern entrance to the Red Sea, the Yemen conflict is of utmost strategic significance for German foreign policy and naturally affects German interest as it threatens the stability of the Gulf region. The intervention of regional powers in the Yemen conflict, including Iran and Gulf states led by Saudi Arabia, threatens to draw the country into the broader Sunni-Shia divide. We have seen many times how this divide can prolong human suffering. To bring about, to bring about an end to the once seemingly intractable crisis that has gripped the country for seven years, Germany has to seize the moment of our new coalition government and focus on talking in greater responsibility to foster regional stability in the Middle East and the Gulf region. And I, and I was a member of the team who negotiate the coalition contract. And what we written down in this contract is something also like a Zeitenwende like Olaf Scholz said. Um, because I think the last decades, the foreign policy in Germany did not play the role it should be for a country of our size, not only, especially of our economic size. So I think in, we do not um, take care about of a really of a freedom world. If you see how Germany deal the last decades, especially the you know, both parties, it's not you cannot say the Christian Democratic Union is also our biggest coalition partner, Social Democratic, of course. If you see how often Angela Merkel drive to China, and how often they drive to India or to Malaysia, to democratic countries. Thirteen times in the legislation period, she, uh, she was in China, and three times in India, and no times in Malaysia. And, and of course, it sounds a little bit crazy, or looks crazy, if you form a parliament, like in Kuala Lumpur, for example, you go on way to form, uh, to, to make a democracy of your country, and say, okay, what's, what's happened? What is, the, what is the benefit? What is the advantage to be a democracy? Come it along with a, come it along with a closer relationship to Germany or not? And also with Ukraine. If you're serious, you have to say you're very Russian focused and not very Kiev focused. So we feel very close to, to Russia. 
but we felt very close to Russia, very f close to, to China. And I think we changed this in the collision, uh, in the collision um, contract to change this narrative. We have to stay on the side of a free liberal world, and we have to um, support all people in the world who fight for, f for a freedom world. And of course, we want to, we want to bring much more um, engagement in, in, the, in, in, the, in foreign policy. And you see, like um, our new Minister for Foreign Affairs, um, Mrs. Baerbock, works. I think it's completely different than Heiko Maas, because she is definitely engaged. She is, in, she is engaged. And, it, and for me, I, I'm very lucky that she is our new Ministry of Foreign Affairs. For this, we should not only focus on continuing our current efforts under the development cooperation for Yemen, but also look at preventing further proliferation of nuclear weapons in the region. This is especially important when we look at Iran, which is one, the brink of producing enough fuel for a nuclear bomb. And for us, it cannot be acceptable that Iran could have a nuclear bomb. Because if Iran would have a nuclear bomb, Israel and other not mind like it lengths, especially the free people from Yemen, would not exist. Because this pressure. At the same time, it is critical to uphold and intensify measures to stop radicalization and terrorism together with our regional and national partners. Be it the Houthi movement or Al Qaeda, these groups not only threaten the people of Yemen, but the stability of the whole region and the Muslim Brotherhood, of course, too. Sharing information, cutting off terrorist financing, and identifying recruitment networks is something we must should we, we must we must shoulder together. We must we must much we must work together much stronger than in the last decade to fight against terrorist organization like Rutis, Al Qaeda, and, and so on, and especially Hezbollah. Far for far too long, the hopes of the people of Yemen have been dashed. It is time to seize the move uh, the moment that a much needed ceasefire has provided and stand together. Thank you for your attention, and maybe we have time for questions or not. OK. OK. Excellent. Thank you again very much. And I'm sure that you've inspired comments, questions, and uh, debates. So who would like to go first? Please raise your hand. And uh, as always, if you could briefly introduce yourself, please. Thank you so much. My name is Louis Liriani from Yemen Embassy. Thank you so much for arranging this event. And uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I believe Germany is very respectful in Yemen. All parties respect Germany very much. So that's why we need Germany to talk more against violations and uh, to push Houthi more to commit to, their, uh, to the truth and to peace in Yemen. Uh, my question is what Germany can do more to support the truth now when we know that government of Yemen committed to all points in truce uh, agreement and the Houthi is refused until now to end the siege in Taiz. Thank you. Please. Yes, I think we have, to, um, we, have to, we have to see that right now the government, the new government and also the new coalition started with a war in Europe. And it's, 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 it's crazy, Never, nobody, could, uh, nobody could imagine um, that we live in a time of this brutal war. And so a lot of things, uh, they are also, I mentioned it in my speech, they are also in the world. Um, we had not not that time to think about. But I'm pretty sure today, I, I think in two hours, I, in one two hours, <laughs> I'm going to meet um, Mr. Ackermann. Uh, he's one of the most experienced guy in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs when it comes to the Middle East, and talk to him what we can what we can do in this region, what we should do in this region. Because um, one thing is is sure, we have to be. I said it already. Much more stronger there 
and stay on the side on the on the on the freedom side in, on this and on, on this thing and, and fight against uh, Ruti and and everything and do much more than we did uh, in the last decade. Of course, it's it's that's the it's the it's, I wish it for the new for the new coalition. Thank you. We'll come to the front row. Uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. I'm Ibrahim Jalal. Uh, I'm a researcher. You, you, you focused on, you know, the Houthis and what what things should be done. What are the tools that you can promote in your conversations? Is it targeted sanctions to sort of crumble the economic capabilities that finance the Houthi war machine in Yemen? Uh, is it ways to increase uh, monitoring around, you know, uh, sanction evasion? Uh, is it banning Houthi media outlets, both digital and traditional? What is that that actually can be done? And, and also, uh, you spoke about the expulsion of, of Jews, Yemeni Jews in particular. Uh, how does that fit in the, into the broader narrative which, which the Houthis actually uh, stand for in the very slogan that you began your speech with? Thank you. As I th not I, you, you all and me too, have uh, seen the last weeks, last two months, that the government of Germany and also Europe found a lot of tools fighting against bad people. Tools we searched for many years where they are. But now the crisis is in Europe. And now the refugees from Ukraine comes to us. We see it every day in Berlin. More, more than more, two or three hundred thousand women with children come to us. And I think these tools we have now we should not only um, take it for Russia, we should also take these tools for Ruti and our proxies. And, we th and, and if, we, if we were very clear to fight for, free, for a free the world, then we have to say these tools, sanction, banning, uh, everything you mentioned, um, is that there are tools we have to use not only against Russia, we have only to use against other terror organizations, but the first thing is you have to mention them a terrorist organization. And, we, and this is what we, what, we have to, what we have to change. And then we, have, and then we can have every, every um, sanctions you, me, you mentioned, but uh, we, we should rethink about what we want to do. And in the last decades, I think Germany was, okay, Yemen was far, far, far away. And not that close. And, that's, um, and if it's not, if it's not every day on the news, nobody cares about. It. And that's and that's the truth. And we have to bring it to television. We have to bring we have to bring it to our newspapers. And look at what 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 is what is with the Ukraine right now. There are um, ninety percent. The, dest the destroying of the cities in the last week, are much more than ninety percent of the cities was destroyed. The city um, taken by the Russian guys. More than a thousand. Uh, I, I cannot say the I, I cannot say the numbers because it's a secret number. Um, uh, but but <laughs> because my cell phone is, <laughs> is there. Um, um, but we but you see a lot of destro destroying, and it's the better situation in the war since the beginning. And if you see in the news in, in the news, it's not more than first topic. And so it and it goes down, and that's the issue. We have to bring it every time on, use, on, on, on the news, and also and also the situation in Yemen, of course, and to 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 to, to show the people about this crazy uh, about the crazy guy. Then we have a public um, meaning that we have to sanction, banning, and so on. What we, what we have to do? Yes, we have we have, the, we, have we have all tools, but we uh, we found it new. We have to go. Okay, so excuse me. We have time for. <laughs> should we bring it to a conclusion then? Okay. Uh, so uh, we, have have a, we have uh, we have a voting at, at two. At uh, one not a problem. All right. <laughs> so in that case, uh, we let us express once again our sincere gratitude for an excellent presentation. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.